Anthony Hing here, and I'm delighted to let you know that Seabreeze Homes is co-sponsoring the 2016 edition of the Kira Criterium, one of the region's headline cycling sprint events. It will be held on the foreshores of Kira Beach this Saturday, the 8th of October, from 8 a.m. to about lunchtime, and we hope you can come and join us. Now, it will offer families and spectators a fabulous community event. And it's drawing in riders from all over Australia, including two of the nation's hottest rising superstars, Gold Coast residents Emily Roper and Troy Herfus, both crowned current age champions for the state of Queensland. I had a chance to chat with them earlier this week, and here are some excerpts. Um, well, I first started when I was about 12. Mm -hmm. My brother and my dad had a bike and they were riding mm -hmm. and my brother got a new bike so I decided just to try it out a little bit. Um, first ride I went on I had about three crashes <laughs> out the back of dad but yeah I kept going and yeah just started entering a few club races and then just progressed from there entering state level then national level yeah and then ended up competing at the World Championships on the track in 2011, then on the road in 2012. Yeah, the bicycle was a, a way of keeping fit for me. My, my job and, and hobby and passion is racing superbikes. So I ride a Honda superbike for Honda Australia. And uh, I was 19 or 20 years old when I bought a bike for the first time, a road bike. And um, I started racing when I was about sort of 21, 22, and, and I'm 29 now and it's like an addiction. You know, I, I can't help but have to, but to get out on the bike on the road and, and, um, and train hard now. Emily, is, is there a particular format that has most appeal to you? Mainly for me, i best suited to the road and the road races, mm -hmm. which is about 80 to 120 k long. Um, I did a little bit of track as a junior and it was great for the speed work and get your legs really on top of the gear and um, helps with your sprinting and things like that. Um, recently only just bought a mountain bike so I've only been for a few rides <laughs> so haven't done much of that but mm -hmm. um, yeah mainly the road racing is my favourite part of cycling. Um, uh, I've done a lot of mountain bike um, racing and riding and cycling between criteria and road racing and, and now I've just taken up a bit of enduro uh, mountain biking which has a lot of downhill which sort of isn't as much cardiovascular work more technique and, and skill but and enjoyment so Great it's for reflexes too, great I for imagine. Reflexes, so yeah. They've all got their own thing that you get enjoyment out of. When, when we look at your rides, it just seems as though you are always picking up cups and personal bests. How do you do that ride after ride? Yeah, well, I suppose I just like to hurt myself. It also helps when I go out training with Troy and Dad. I'm always chasing them around and, yeah, I don't want to get dropped from them, so I'm always trying to hang on to their wheel and they always make me push harder. So, yeah, I end up getting home from most rides pretty tired. <laughs> like sometimes we get home from an easy ride and she seems a bit down and we get home from a really hard ride and she seems happier after her and her, her, myself and her dad have been beating her up the whole time so <laughs> she, I think she just enjoys the pain and that obviously when she gets in a race situation it's all a bit easier for her then because she, she's always training so hard. Um, yeah it was a part of the AIS selection camp down in Canberra that run for over three weeks. Um, it was just one of the rides that they made us do. They drove us out. I don't even know where we started, but they drove us out. They didn't tell us how long we were riding for or where we were going. We just had to ride and we only had one drink bottle and one other bit and that we had to carry full of sand. So we could just replace one bottle throughout the day. Um, so and then, you didn't want to get the bottles mixed up either. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't taste very good. And then they would stop us during the ride and then we had to do an individual time trial and they didn't tell us how long they were either. We'd just have to go till we seen them at the finish line. And then we'd, after we'd finished that, we'd keep riding. And then we ended up doing about five individual time trials throughout the ride. And the last one was from the bottom to the top of Threadbow. And it was freezing up there because they didn't really tell us where we were going. So we just had just um, jerseys like this on. And one of the girls ended up getting hypothermia at the top. So it was definitely one of the toughest days I've done. Were you questioning whether that was going to be your last day ever in cycling? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at that stage. I was but actually one of the girls, a lot of the girls were pretty upset and shaken by the ride and I was kind of like, come on girls, just toughen up. Like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the sort of attitude you're going to bring into the Curie Crit on Saturday? 
yeah, I always like to have an aggressive race and make it hard for all the other girls. So, yeah, I'll probably be out there hurting them a little bit. <laughs> so for people who want to get down there and see really, really top quality open women's, get to make sure you're down there by around 10. Yeah, it's also a good place because it's along the beach. So we don't have many races in such a good area. They're normally out the back of no man's land and no one gets to see them. So yeah, it's, it's such, such a good, good area. Yeah. 30 laps, I would say. It's yeah. an hour. An hour plus three laps. Yes. And Troy, then you start. Just after Emily, so yeah, get down around 10 o'clock and there's a few coffee shops along the beachfront there and, and by, by the time I start on a nice warm day, maybe a cold beer or something.